Thanks for joining me for this Faith Talk. Today I want to talk about something that concerns every human who has ever or will ever live. The afterlife. To be sure, I have no definitive answer to the question of what happens after we die. Surely, even with our faith and the Bible as our resource, no one can say for sure. What I offer you in this faith talk is my own personal reflection. It's an exploration. I hope it will help you with your personal beliefs as you continue on your own faith journey. As a preface, let me say that reincarnation, which millions of humans believe, does not enter into my realm of possibilities. I do not believe that we are continually reborn in different forms on earth. I don't want to take away from the belief of so many others, but it just isn't in the scope of what is conceivable for me. I do believe that I was uniquely and purposefully created by God. When my time on earth is complete, my body will die. But my physical body is not the totality of my being. I am both body and soul, physical and spiritual. So while my physical body will die and decompose like all other physical things, I am confident that my soul will live on. We can recall God's declaration to Adam in the Garden of Eden. You are dirt, and to dirt you shall return. But we also read in Genesis that when God created the man, God blew into his nostrils the breath of life, and so man became a living being. It is precisely this breath of God which makes us spiritual, living beings. Here's what St. Paul wrote about the body and spirit. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual one. This I declare, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So that's where I stand on the general question of if there is an afterlife. I say yes, but not in a physical way. As I said, I am both body and spirit. And as St. Paul said, I believe it is my spirit which will inherit the kingdom of God, not my body. There have been many people who have had a near-death experience. As many of them tell us, they seem to leave their body and experience a new state of spiritual being. I believe these people did indeed enter a new phase of the life process. I don't think they arrived at the final destination, but I think they did get a glimpse of the kingdom, which according to most of them is glorious. We hear many of those people talk about a sense of peace and freedom and light. So many of them sense an intense, dazzling light that attracts them. They long to be in that light, not physically, but spiritually. 
In the first creation story in Genesis, we are told that the first thing God created was light. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And scientists tell us that at the moment of the Big Bang, there was a brilliant flash of light. Well, I understand that light to be God, the energy source that brought creation into being. God is energy and spirit and light and love, not a physical being. So to be in the kingdom of God, to me, means to be spiritually in the energy and light and love of God, with God. And that is what so many of the people who have had a near-death experience describe. Which leads me to believe that whatever comes after this life will not include a physical existence. In the Gospels, we hear Jesus speak of the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. But over the centuries, I think we have altered his definition. I think we have transformed the kingdom of heaven that Jesus spoke of into a physical place called heaven. Let me explain what I mean. Jesus taught that one enters the kingdom of heaven, not by speaking words, but by doing the will of my Father in heaven. And in the Lord's Prayer, he said, Our Father who art in heaven. In John's Gospel, Jesus speaks of coming from the Father and going back to the Father's house. So his words make it sound like heaven is an actual physical place. But I think Jesus meant his words to be understood as metaphors, not to be taken literally. Jesus quite often spoke in metaphor because it was the best way to explain God and the kingdom to us with our limited capacity and vocabulary. It seems to me that what we Christians have done over the years is take his metaphors and turn them into literal statements. Many, many Christians believe heaven to be a physical place, like this room I'm in. The Apostles' Creed states, He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Again, we are intended to read this as a metaphor and not a literal statement. Jesus isn't literally sitting in heaven in a chair next to the Father. The church defines kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven as the reign or rule of God. The kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The definition of heaven in the Catechism is eternal life with God. Heaven is the state of supreme and definitive happiness, the goal of the deepest longings of humanity. These definitions fit with my understanding of the kingdom of heaven. Heaven is not a physical place, but a state of being in the fullness of God. In John's Gospel, Jesus explained it this way. Now this is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God. He speaks of eternal life as a knowing God. It's an experience of being in true and complete relationship with God. The Catechism says, Who art in heaven, as we hear in the Lord's Prayer, does not refer to a place, but to God's majesty and his presence in the hearts of the just. 
I believe we need to get back to Jesus' original notion of, and the church's definition of, the kingdom of heaven. To understand heaven as a physical location would lead us to believe in a physical, bodily resurrection for all of us. The Catechism does say, the Holy Roman Church firmly believes and confesses that on the Day of Judgment, all men will appear in their own bodies before Christ's tribunal to render an account of their own deeds. I will point out here that I believe Jesus rose from the dead to make a point. He was proving what he had been teaching about God and the kingdom. And we needed to witness him alive after his death to understand everything he had been telling us. But I don't think that naturally presupposes that we will also have a physical resurrection. And remember, his physical body after his resurrection was clearly different from his earthly body. Remember that Mary Magdalene and the apostles didn't even recognize him after the resurrection. So it clearly was something altogether different. I don't believe that just because Jesus physically rose from the dead to show the glory and power of God, that we will all physically rise from the dead. I'm just not there. I know God to be the energy through which all things came to be. God, the source and sustainer of everything, is within all physical creation, yes, but also beyond all of creation. And certainly not a physical being like we are. Over the centuries, humans have tried to make God like us, but we were created in God's image, not the other way around. God, the creator, doesn't have a physical body. So why would we expect to have physical bodies in the kingdom of God? Wouldn't that just take us right back to where we are now? I don't think that's what Jesus was trying to say. And I don't think that's what I want for eternity. I feel the need to mention purgatory here. For the Catholic Church, it is an important part of the afterlife. Here's how the Catechism defines it. A state of final purification after death and before entrance into heaven for those who died in God's friendship but were only imperfectly purified. A final cleansing of human imperfection before one is able to enter the joy of heaven. I believe that the entirety of our life and death is a process. Conception, birth, life, death, and afterlife are all phases within this process. I don't think we can separate these into isolated segments of existence. So purgatory could enter into my realm of possibilities as another phase in the process. But I have a difficulty with part of the church's definition. It says, for those who died in God's friendship, but were only imperfectly purified. This makes it sound like purgatory is only necessary for some imperfect people. I don't think any of us are perfect. We're all most definitely imperfect. I don't think some people need purgatory while others don't. I believe it would be a one-size-fits-all deal. What I do agree with is that the church defines it as a state of being rather than a physical place. 
I think so many Christians picture purgatory as a place because we're told we go to purgatory for this purifying process. But for me, it makes sense that it would be just part of the process of the whole living continuum. So I'm still undecided as to where I stand on purgatory. It's possible, but I'm not sure I'm totally on board with the concept yet. In my mind, God's mercy and love might be too big for the need for purgatory. Now, what about hell? Hell is an easy concept for me. The Catechism defines hell as the state of definitive self-exclusion from communion with God and the blessed, reserved for those who refuse by their own free choice to believe and be converted from sin even to the end of their lives. The first thing I notice in this definition is that just like the kingdom of heaven, it speaks of a state of being rather than a physical place. That works for me. Just as I do not believe heaven to be a physical location, I do not believe hell to be a physical place where some people suffer for eternity. Jesus assured us that the kingdom of heaven is open to all. According to the Catechism, everyone is called to the kingdom. I believe God created all people to be with God in the ki kingdom. I don't believe anyone was created to be left out and to suffer in the fires of hell for eternity. My understanding of hell is that it is the total absence of God. If a person intentionally turned away from God forever and spent eternity in the dark abyss devoid of God's love, that would indeed be hell. Not a place, but a horrendous state of being. Without God, that soul would surely suffer for eternity. But I also believe it is not God who would send someone to hell, but the person who chooses to be without God, as the Catechism states. So, is there anyone in hell? I don't think so. As I said, I know God to be love and life itself. And God's love transforms even the darkest hearts. Even the most egregious sinners of all time would surely recognize and choose God's infinite love before it was too late. So, no. I do not think there is or will ever be any soul suffering that horrific eternal torment. God would not let that happen. Now, I just said a lot. Let me end by giving you a brief recap of my beliefs. God, the source and sustainer of all creation, is not a physical being. Heaven and hell are not physical places, but a state of being in and with or without God. We are both body and soul, physical beings and spiritual beings. When our earthly bodies die and decompose, our spirits live on eternally. I believe all departed souls are in the kingdom of God and hell is empty. Thanks for joining me for this Faith Talk. I hope it has been beneficial for you. I would love to hear your thoughts on the afterlife. Please leave me a comment and please share this video with anyone who might enjoy it or benefit from it. 
Join me next time for another episode of Faith Talk.